Thank you, Chamberlain. We have with us in the studio Emmanuel Ayegbonam, who is a legal practitioner and also Director of African Centre for Constitutional and Parliamentary Studies. You're welcome to Sunrise Daily. Thank you so much. Now, you have seen um, the ministerial list. We've also heard that the Senate has amended its rules uh, to sit tonight, uh, I think it's to sit at night, also sit on Friday and I think Monday as well, which they usually don't sit on those days. I think they usually hold committee meetings and do some other legislative work. But are you impressed, one, that they're doing that? And then two, um, what do you make of, the, of this list? Well, um, I'm surprised uh, that uh, after 20 years of uh, practicing with this uh, constitution, the Nigerians are still surprised. If you take a look at that constitution, section 147, subsection 1, mm gives the president the power to establish these offices. And then the only um, check is on the Senate confirming the list by subsection 2. And then subsection 3, that he must conform with section 4, since subsection 3, in having every state have a representative as a nominee and federal character, which uh, we all preach about. So, taking a look at this presidential uh, uh, constitution and the prerogative of the president, we should not be what disturbed as much as we are over what is on the ground. Then, secondly, as per the list, yes, he has now moved it. Like I said, he establishes the ministerial setting. Then, the list, uh, the lineup, for more or less, um, one wouldn't be disturbed having seen what the uh, initial four years is. And then at a certain point in time, the Nigerians were actually more or less forcing the president to release the list, and which has brought us now to the Senate having also, by its uh, constitutional rights, by Section 60, they have rights to make their rules. Then, based within the rules, they have the right also to suspend their rules. So, having expressed that constitutionally, I don't think any of us will be disturbed. Rather, what we are... I'm asking if you are impressed. I mean, are you uh, by, the, by the fact that they are not saying, look, we're going to, we're going to only going to look at this within our sitting period. They have, you know, uh, they, they seem to be bending over double backwards to make no, sure... No, uh, we, we are all here when the uh, battle for the presiding offices of the National Assembly raged. And APC came and established that we are the ruling party. We also, like I said, they have showed that uh, the opposition can only, or even the country can only have their say, but they will have their way. They have uh, taken the lead, putting those they want to be there as their presiding officers, have their way. Now, what they have uh, schemed for has come to be. So I don't think... Uh, schemed for? How do you mean? They feel that this is our government, and we want to run it this time around without any what, any feeling of opposition, even from within. So, so the, the point I'm making is, uh, you are talking about the lineup of the those who are in the list. No, 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 no. I'm talking about the fact that the Senate is going to sit on, is uh, trying to treat this matter expeditiously. That's what I'm talking about. Yes. Well, like I said, yes, they felt that uh, the country, every person is cry, uh, crying for ministerial list. Now, all they have to do in response is to now go beyond what they have as the traditional sitting period. Like I said, even by the Constitution and by the standing orders, they are in order, if they do what? If they suspend the rules, to sit beyond normal regular hours. Are, they, are you impressed by that is the question I'm asking you, sir? Well, um, I am impressed in the sense that uh, they feel that they will treat this matter expeditiously because every Nigerian is expecting the roads, electricity, and every other thing we have since 1999 till now. We have not addressed them. So if this is what by uh, facially, let me say facially, we will keep that, that. Let it be. That is my own impression about it. But if it is of looking for change or whatever, well, I think we have missed that road anyway, and that is where the situation is. Yeah, the concern right now uh, for some people is the fact that the president submitted this without the portfolios again, uh, which we have seen presidents do over and over again. Some people are saying that that should change. How do you think it's going to make the work of the people who are going to screen them, the senators? Is it going to make their work easier? Is it going to make it more difficult, especially since they are saying uh, that they would like to be a little firmer in dealing with with those that they are screening? For instance, they said there's not going to be any bow and go for for 
former legislators. Well, um, that's uh, an interesting area which I myself have consistently echoed that if we have presidents since 1999 who have our interests at stake, especially in the issue of what transparency and uh, rule of law and participation, the portfolio should be included because if we give them room for what? Guesswork. Basically, uh, the last exercise. If you listen very well to the questions, you will see that uh, Ngige was almost the, the mindset of the Senate then was that he would be minister for health because of his background. And, and he ended up in labor. Uh, within the confines of the uh, Attorney General then, between Fashola, the Malami who later got it, and then uh, Ochoche then, there were division over where actually the question should go. So, but like I have said, if we are still looking at the mantra of change, I think we will be deceiving ourselves. So, the issue is that uh, the mindset of the president so far from 1999 till now is that, well, I am the man on the steering wheel, I will have my will, I establish it, and I will do that. That's just what I'm saying because mm -hmm. postponers will have enabled us to see even if those who will go back those positions will now tell us what they have done and what is at stake and what brings them back, what they have left unfinished that brought them back or what another. That, 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 we'll be assuming that the people who have returned or who have been nominated from the, from the previous list or from the previous cabinet are going to be going back to their previous position. Mm -hmm. Do you think that that's what's going to happen? Well, this is, uh, that's, why, that's why I told you that you have now, we have now removed another guesswork. Nobody knows the parameters that brought them back. Mm. And nobody knows the parameters that may take them out of those ministries. Mm. Because if you take them there, you may entrench them as principalities consistently for eight years. Then another issue is that they may have left some critical job undone that brought them back. Now, most likely, we will not see power and uh, uh, housing with works in one portfolio any longer. But all these things, there are issues that may come up because the budget we are talking about, the reasons for the last year's budget have not been even been perfected. So these are the government of uh, problems we have in hand, oh, which portfolios will have determined. We are still crying about uh, roads, second Niger bridge, um, electricity and the rest of them. Security as well. So these are the critical areas. We are those who would have manned this if we have portfolios would have now been what stretched to the ultimate to see if they have the capacity and mental ability to execute on those jobs. Mm -hmm. Talking about portfolios, one of the things you saw in the president's first term was that he tried to reduce the amount of uh, ministries, departments, and agencies. And I think he also reduced the number of ministers that were appointed. But this time around, it, the number has gone up to 43, uh, even now appointing one from each geopolitical zone in addition to uh, the 36 that the Constitution stipulates. Uh, do you really think that um, we're losing the plot with regards to uh, reducing the cost of governance? Well, um, the issue, like I said, is that he has a prerogative on the establishment of those portfolios. And I don't think uh, the cost in governance goes to number of ministers. Rather, the cost in governance goes to uh, effectiveness, allocation efficiency, and distributive efficiency in the list of forms, and then the public service living up to the rules and of the game. We have no procurement council for procurement. That is the main issue. Fiscal responsibility commission is not in, in place. So the main issue is that all these issues, all these kinds of issues, and who really has the time to check what they are doing? You are all contracts. You don't release money to them. And Three months to the end of the financial year, you release money which will not be spent. So these are the issues. Now we have the schools that the rains are, are with us. So you wait until when the rains have gone to mobilize, and then we have another budget in hand. So these critical issues of governance and administration have not been addressed, and they are still with us. Mm. So the world is running away. You've seen Boris Johnson already mm. taking up as PM. He had his cabinet on ground. In South Africa, Ramaphosa did that immediately within one week. Mm. Mm. So we should fix the 
Titan, and let, let know where we are. Mm. It is not Uhuru yet. We are not pleased with what is on the ground, and so be it. Well, we have to thank you for sharing your thoughts with us this morning. Emmanuel Ayed Bunam is a legal practitioner and also the director of the African Center for Constitutional and Parliamentary Studies. That's it for the segment. So, I will continue in a moment. Please stay with us. All right, so to give us a sneak peek of uh, what we expect uh, when the senators get to the chamber concerning the list of ministerial nominees that they read out yesterday, Terry Kumi joins us. He, uh, he covers that area for us. Good morning, Terry, uh, Terry, and thank you for joining us today. So, uh, all eyes expectedly will be on them this morning. Yes, we see in some of the dailies here where they say there will be stiff screening. We wonder what that means. But what, uh, what's the mood? What is going on where you are concerning this screening at the moment? Um, Chamberlain, good morning to you. I think it's safe to say that it appears as if nothing is happening. It doesn't have the buzz that we had expected. Uh, not much security presence here. As a matter of fact, staff of the National Assembly are still arriving. The cleaners are still doing their job, and the media houses will go live like us and setting up. So nothing much is happening as we speak right now. It's uh, just about an hour before the Senate uh, commences its sitting. And we understand that uh, quite a number of the ministers will come through, but nothing is happening at the moment as we speak. I, I know that, uh, you know, in one of the 